Can you guys hear me out there? Clear? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, I can hear you, dear. Yeah. Okay. Amen. God. My wife is running a little late, but oh, that's a... she'll be she'll be in. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's all right, dear. Yeah. I thought she came on on her phone, but she must be getting close then, so she shut it off. But welcome to um Iron Sharpens Iron. We're we'll here for another week of the Saints getting together. And it's a joy to be able to come together and fellowship and commune in God's word, especially start off from the new year. You know, start off the new year right. You know, um, God is going to be working some wonderful things in our cognitive. So what a time for us to just be open in our minds and for the enemy to try to get in and steal our joy, turn our attention to something else. We have to be careful for that. We have to be we have to be understanding and knowing that the enemy is running around trying to devour anything he can. But we have to be strong so we can stand on the word of God. Today, if this word doesn't get you closer to a prayer life, then I don't know what will. We're looking at things from all aspects and we're just using legible scripture, not too hard to interpret. To understand God's word. But right here as our mission statement, at Iron Sharpens Iron, just to be clear, our mission is to collectively come together for Bible study as we get to know each other personally, building genuine, boldly, well, genuine, godly relationships. Sorry about that. Only then can we truly come to love one another as our Lord has commanded. 1 John 3, 23, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. That's a beautiful commandment right there. Love beats all gifts. Love does. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Brother Lemil, would you like to press in today, brother? Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Okay. Paul Jehovah, we come this evening to give you thanks for everything you have done for us, Father. We just want to thank you for letting us see another year, Father. And Father, we want to just want you to lead us this year, Father, and bring peace and thankfulness, Father, if thy will. And Father, thank you for going to the cross for us and for giving our sin, Father. Father, be with those who be with everybody on YouTube today and that they, those who are listening, that they would get some uh, good information, Father, and and learn about you, Father, and your words, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, be with those who are ill, Father, and nursing back to help. Help us love each one another, Father, in this world. Guide us, Father, and protect us, Father. Thank you for being you, Father. And, and we know, Father, that you love us dearly, Father, because you went to the cross for us, Father. Be with uh, T and Michelle and and Derek and everybody on here today. Miss Lindy coming in, just came in. And um uh, that we have a good discussion about uh, prayer, you know, and just thank you. That's all we can do, Father. Just thank you and give you praise, Father. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. So my wife would be a good one. Amen. Amen. I like that. Amen. Uh, thank you, T. Thank you. Yeah. Thank God you. God bless you, Sister Lindy and Noah, and Brother T and Lemua. It's, it's good to have Oh, Noah. You. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Go ahead. It's good to have faithful men and women of God that just constantly yearn for God's word. And you can see that because these people are coming every week or coming when they can. They're making it. And to be a part of the word of God, which is life, 
Today, we're going to breathe life out of these scriptures. We looked at 2 Chronicles. For y'all that don't know, we have a men's study at 8 in the morning every Sunday. So if the men would like to join to strengthen us, because when you go to Corinthians at 11 and 1 and 2, God deals with the men. The head of Jesus is God. The head of woman is man. And the head of man is Christ. God is an orderly God. So we have a platform there. And last week we read about a king down in Judah named Asa who didn't put his trust in the Lord. He had the same leg disease who Hezekiah, we're about to read about now, had. And Hezekiah, through his prayer, God granted his wishes and added 15 years onto this man's life. So we're going to see that when we trust in the carnal, it'll always let you down. But when you trust in the Lord thy God, man, all things are possible. So right here at, at, at Hebrews at 11 and 1, just so we can get an understanding that the things that we see are not so. All things that we see were created from the invisible things that are not seen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Man, you know how powerful that is right there? This whole world was not framed by the visible, what we're looking at, but by the invisible in the spiritual realm. So in that same spiritual realm is where we have to go to get our healing, where we have to go to get our salvation, and where we have to call upon that name to get restored. Hallelujah. Man, ain't that powerful right there? Man, that is a powerful word right here. Man, that's powerful. Man, that's deep. That's deep. I gotta, I gotta kick back for a minute. Anybody want to speak on that? Anybody want to speak on Hebrews 11, 1 through 3? Faith is the substance of all things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God makes all things in the spiritual realm. God heals all things in the spiritual realm. God fix all things in the spiritual realm that manifests itself out into the carnal. So let's look at this prayer. And it's at Isaiah 38, one through six. And we titled it, Prayer Does Work. Now, to understand this king, he was going through some things at the time. He had simply lost his way. He had the king of Assyria that sent a messenger by the name of Roshaka out and about to destroy Judah. While he's going through this, at the same time, he had a leg disease. Look what happened. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him. And thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Can you imagine that? The prophet coming to tell you to set thy house in order, you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I walk before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Man, I'm going to stop right there because that is so powerful. He didn't do like King Asa in two chronicles, run up to Syria and give him all the gold for him to go up against his brother, trusting in man. But Hezekiah turned to the wall and started crying and praying. Look what he prayed to God. 
Remember when I walked in front of you in perfectness of a perfect heart? So we could tell he lost his way, but we could see also that he used to walk in front of God with a perfect heart. And he reminded God of that. And he wept sore. Then came the word to the Lord of Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, the Lord said, thus says the Lord, thy God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayers. I have seen thy tears. Look at before, before Isaiah could get out good and to the courtyard, God already seen Hezekiah turn to the wall and crying and praying. And he sent Isaiah back in there. Go and say to Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, thy God of David, thy father, I have heard the prayers. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee. Mm -hmm. I told you were shakas out there from the king of Assyria ready to destroy Judah. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hands of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Look at the power of prayer. Not only did this man get years added unto his life, but also the enemy out there got destroyed. Now, and if you remember when Rashaka went back up to Syria, because he heard that his city was under attack by a rumor that the Lord sent out the angels that night, got up and smote like a hundred and some thousand people in the camp. Look at the power of prayer and coming against God's people. Just think of us. When we put ourselves in position to trust in God and not man. Now, I could see this being a hard thing if we wasn't introduced to the spiritual realm or if you didn't know God, then we grow up knowing this carnality. But when we say we're a Christian, we say that the power of Christ came in our life, we have a whole nother different duty now. You got a whole bunch of people running around saying they're Christians, but when we go through things, we're relying on the carnality. How you mm -hmm. think God feels when he see you do that? He's a jealous God. How you think he feels when he know he wants to enlighten you for you to go and get into a situation that he has allowed to strengthen you and you go and you turn to the carnality for your help? Amen. The floor is open, saints. God bless you guys. Well, it, it, it's more like a, to me, it, it, it's more to me, it's like a, a forgiveness. You know, um, when you are doing good, you know, and you don't know really know where your blessings coming from. Then some people would know where their blessings come from, but uh, then when the bad, when the midnight come, or the, the wind come, then they just seem to forget God. Mm. You know, well, I was doing good a few years ago, mm. but now I'm doing. It's not I'm not doing good right now, so it's hard for them to to uh, it's it's like it's hard for them to uh, ponder that. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. So the word anybody else? I'm trying to I'm trying to find the verse, but <laughs> I'm trying to find that verse in here. Uh, anybody else? To me, it's like. It's like he's our father and he sees us doing, trying to do good, then we do bad. And then we, he, he gives us the assets. He gives us the tools, but yet we want to go smoke and mess and use those tools. Mm -hmm. You know, that can make your parents, which is God upset. It makes you raised your kids in church and here they go mm -hmm. over Somewhere they you got to go way across town to get help when it's the wrong kind of help. And, uh, you know, now you keep fighting and you will see God constantly. I see God constantly working in my life because I keep fighting and fighting and fighting. Um, 
uh, uh, examples. I prayed and I was laying down praying and I, my girl was in the room and I said, hold on, I got to do this alone. I went and did it alone and I got on my knees and stayed laying down and right away I started hearing whispers. Right away I started talking more. I was more, um, uh, everything was more. Um, um, when I was laying down, I was falling asleep. I was losing my, my, uh, my praying. I, I didn't really catch on what I was talking about. I was losing, you know, what I was talking about. And then uh, another thing last night is this happened last night. A movie was on and, and there was some bad stuff, girls dancing and I was covering it up with my body. And my baby's mom goes, well, they watch that on TikTok. And in my mind, I said, you know, they don't watch that on TikTok. You know, they, they choose to watch positive stuff. So my daughter goes, let me see, Dad. It's just girls. So I didn't let her see. I kept blocking it. She seen a tiny bit of it. And I was mad that my girl would do that. Why would you not want to enlighten, give them the best? You know, like you said, uh, men is who ladies look up to. Uh, uh, we look up to God. And, you know, it's like she's, I felt like she was deceiving me, my girl. And then so right after that, I, I went and, you know, kind of just walked off as it was already over anyway. And I got a little breath and I was like calming down, but I didn't say nothing. I didn't say no words or nothing. I'm just calming down. And uh, my daughter, me and my daughter were sitting here watching something else. And we see two people kiss. And my daughter goes, nope, before they do it, she's, dad, turn our faces. And I said, there goes my baby. She never left what I was teaching her. What, you know, so it's working right, right then. I said, man, is, is my girl deceiving me? And is my daughter going to fail? You know, but I said, nope, I kept it in God's hands and I just kept going. I kept fighting. When I prayed laying down, I said, nope, get back up. And I prayed the right way. Um, you know, uh, if we go and smoke, you know, don't do fight and we will see God work a lot. That's what I'm, that's all I gotta say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you, brother T for that. Do you think, I, uh, there's a car you just didn't want to die at the time, at the time. You get what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like when uh when he's, what is it uh told him that his time is that mm -hmm. put his life in order. Like, I'm, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> but I'm yeah. saying here's the card that he just had that he said, Let me pray to God that I'm not ready now. You know, I just put it that way. I hear Does you. that make sense? Does that make yeah. sense? It, it, it like, makes sense. Not now, you know. Right. It definitely made good sense because when he was delivered with that news of him preparing to die, what was the first thing he did? Is he turned to God. When you get in a situation, what is the first thing you do? Do you turn to God or do you turn to the carnal? Remember, like we've seen in 2 Corinthians with Asa, when he got into that situation with his brother, he didn't turn to God in prayer. He went up to Assyria and turned to Colonel, to the enemy of Israel. And this is what, you know, Jesus is showing us. This is what the Father is showing us in here. How we're going to go through things, but who do you turn to when you go through those things? And look what Hezekiah did. He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And he reminded the Lord. Remember, a relationship mm -hmm. is reciprocal. Remember now, O oh Lord, I beg thee, beseech me, how I walk before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. See, all those things can get away from you. But look what he did. He turned to the Lord and started speaking to him like me and you having a relationship. Remember when I walked perfect in front of you? And you could tell it was sincere because he was crying. I have something to say about prayer. Amen. How are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> doing fine. Hey, Jessica. Hello. Yeah. Um, All right. So um, Charles and I were talking, and I asked him, you know, um, 
the you know the last few days of the the end of last year um talking about it uh not really like resolutions but just you know going over the year what how's this year been what is one thing that you know maybe we could strengthen what's what you know some things that we can stop doing and one of the things that we talked about was prayer you know um and I admitted to him and we ended up praying about it though I admitted to him um that instead of running to God a lot of times I'll run to him I'll run to him first instead of God. And it shouldn't be like that. And I recognize that myself. And so, um, I, um, you know, we talked about that and he goes, you know, that's right. That's, that's the way it should be. And so I guess I made a commitment to, to, um, to go to my father in heaven first and then bring it to my husband, you know, um, obviously if it's an emergency situation or whatever, you know, I don't know, but you know what I mean? Just going to God first. And then, Another thing that we talked about too, and he's talked about a lot is, um, modeling prayer in front of my children. Um, I had an issue this morning where I had to, um, kind of come down hard on my daughter cause she's just not been listening, um, to what I've been asking her to do. And she just thinks she can do whatever she wants. So I, I went off on her this morning and I hate confrontation. It makes me jittery and shaky. I just, you know, don't tell nobody cause, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just get, um, I just don't like confrontation. So I came back in the room and my son was in here and, you know, I'm just like having anxiety, thinking the worst, like, oh man, cause she's got, you know, I guess not, not TMI, but she has mental health issues. So she threatens suicide a lot. So I feel like if I press down on her too hard, she's just going to be like, oh, well, I'm just going to kill myself. You know what I mean? So, but I know that's manipulation too. And, you know, there's just a whole bunch, but anyways, that's what was going through my head. And I was talking to my son and I was like, you know what? I don't have to do this alone. And while he was sitting right here in the room with me, I got down on my knees and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for like 20 minutes and I was crying and, you know, he got to see that and I'm not trying to brag or anything, but that was one thing that I was really proud of that he could see what that looks like. You know, I'm not doing this alone. I'm not doing this by myself. And even if it's hard, he can see me that I'm getting my strength from my father in heaven. I don't have to do this alone. I don't have to rely on man, um, you know, to, or anybody really to, to help me get through things. So I just wanted to speak on that. Amen. Amen. What's, her, what's your daughter's name? Jessica. We're going to pray for her. And keep her um, most definitely. Yeah, her name's Elisa. Okay. Man, it's important that we model. And I like that you said that, Jessica, that we model in front of our kids. I like what you said too also, T. Make oh, sure block them from seeing that if you can. You know, don't let them do it in front of you. If they're going to do it, it's going to be on their own time. But don't let them see you getting comfortable with letting them do that. Amen. 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 I'd like to speak on that too, uh, you guys. Um, uh, I've got um, a testimony on that, which we are talking about prayer, right? So my thing is that I always give thanks and praise to the Lord Almighty every morning when I get up for the air and for him to give me uh, life, you know, and, and as the day goes by, you know, we have everybody all in uh, line of command that, uh, you know, we, we go through like steps of uh, people that we go through. And that's the same thing according to our Lord, right? We got God, we got the Son, we got the Holy Ghost. And for us to go through the day of that, um, that's how I, uh, how, how I live my life in accordance. You know, um, I, I, I uh, pray. I cry when I pray because I I want him to feel my emotions, not just spiritually, but emotionally, so that he knows that that's what I really er- yearn for, right? So when I tell people my testimony, that's that's all I say is, you know, you, you got to go within the line of command, right? So in order for things to work and how you work in life... We, uh, you know, if you're in the military or whatnot, we go in the, in the line of command. And that's the same thing with our, uh, you know, 
our way to home, which is heaven. So, you know, just kind of sharing that and um, with you guys, because I'm, I'm a living proof of that where uh, I got sober and I've been crying for it all by myself by praying to him wanting it and wanting it more so as i'm doing that i'm going through other chapters in my life to have finances for for the right reasons have love for the right reasons and it all works and accordingly right so it's just what you give is what you give back right so uh i guess that's my my outtake on that you guys i just wanted to share that part Amen. Thank you, Amen. I like to make a comment too. Thank you, brother. Yeah. That was good. Thank Amen. you for sharing that. Um, I'm I'm here at the tail end, but I just love everything that I've heard so far, and I've been blessed on the little bit that I've gotten since I walked in the door. One thing I did want to um just my comment I wanted to make was I heard um brother T talking about his daughters and making a good impression on them, and mm -hmm. then picking that up, and that's wonderful. That praise God because they our children learn through our example and what they see us actually living out. And so that's one thing we have to be mindful is that, when we're, um, that when we're walking this walk and everything, you know, it's not um, a once a week thing. It's not, um, you know, a here and a here and there thing, but it's consistently how we live our lives. And our children will see that they'll see it by the way that we live daily, the way that we talk, the way that we interact with them. And I just wanted to say one thing that stood out with me was when brother T um, was talking about the moment on the television, I just thought about it. And you know what? That's actually a moment, not only to, to, to conceal it from them, but it's actually a good moment to witness to our children. We should use that time. That's a good time to open up that conversation, you know, based on their age level, you know, on um, not just covering, but why just, you know, giving them that understanding, you know, we witness the people, but we have to witness to our own children. So it, you know, even more so than just, um, you know, giving them the understanding of why, you know, not that kissing is bad. But right. kissing is not good when you're, you know, then you explain to them. You're able to explain to them, well, God likes it when you're married. You know, you can kind of get into a witness with them and you're teaching them. And then that gives them more of an understanding that, you know what I mean? And then not only that, you know, or, you know, um, that's not, you know, God doesn't like it when there's two men or two women kissing, whatever the case is, whatever that's on television, right? But that gives us a chance to witness and to go to the scripture with our children. So I just wanted to bring that up. That's what really stood out to me. Not only so much that they're shying away from it, but I think they need to have the understanding that it's not bad to kiss. God wants us, you know, but there's, you know, that's something that a man and woman does when they're married, you married or whatever age your kid is, you know, what's age appropriate. But again, I just want to say that's a good time to witness to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Thank right. You. Yeah. Amen on that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he get older, he will not depart from it. So, yeah, when their minds are vulnerable, when they're young and when, and in that stage of evolving, it definitely is a good time to teach and to distinguish and show them, you know, what's right and what's wrong. And, and um, But the biggest thing of it all is that after we're telling them that, they don't catch us engaging in that same thing. Because kids are smarter than you think. Amen. So right here at John 8 and 12. Amen. Amen. And Jessica's really got a great, a great testimony. That was awesome, Jessica. I'm I'm living that what she said. I'm like, oh my God, that's gonna be a little later coming to life. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids are 13 and uh, six right now. So that was awesome. Let's this is a powerful one. I don't want to talk, I want to listen. All right, that's it. Thank you, guys. Amen. Thank you. We're, li we're living in a time right now, you guys, to where spirits are running rampant. And just like Sister Jessica was saying about her daughter, you know, there's a lot of people that are going through that situation out there with suicide. And we must take that serious. When they say that, we must take that serious and find ways, like you were saying, Jessica, to have that balance. That balance to where you don't be too strict to where they perform that and enough to where they don't get away with that. 
but more so let them see you doing what you're telling them not to do. Amen. At John 8 and 12, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's look at the light of life. The light of life is we're going to have joy. We're going to have happiness. We're going to have peace. Our cognitive is going to be set on things that are noble, things that are good. 